Ah, <sighs> World of Tanks. It has changed a lot over the time, hasn't it? From minor buffs and nerfs to brand new vehicles, brand new vehicle nations and even the massive 1.0 graphics improvement update. I guess it's quite safe to say that World of Tanks has gone through quite some changes in the past couple of years. With some vehicles benefiting from nice buffs and other previously overpowered vehicles quite rightfully suffering from heartbreaking nerfs. But there are also quite a few vehicles that haven't been touched by Wargaming for ages. And of course, if you keep adding newer and better vehicles into the game, the older, more classic ones kind of get overflown by all those fancy new tanks in the game. Not only stat-wise, but also popularity-wise. And that's why I decided to give them some well-deserved love today, because in today's top 5 video, we're gonna be counting down the top 5 tanks that desperately need a buff. And just like almost every other top 5 video on my channel, this list is mainly based on my personal opinion. So please don't be too harsh to me in the comment section for forgetting a tank that you would have picked. But now with all the talking out of the way, let's dive straight into the list. So to kick things off at the number 5 position on this list, we have the AMX 30B. So the AMX 30B has to be probably one of the least played tier 10 mediums in the game. But why is that? Is the grind to the 30B really that painful? Or is the Batchat 25T just way too popular? Well, not really. And what I'm about to say might sound pretty weird for people who do not own an AMX 30B. But the reason barely anybody plays the AMX 30B is because they would much rather play the tier 9 French single shot medium tank, the AMX 30 prototype. But why? Aren't tier 10 vehicles supposed to be the real deal, the big upgrade, and the reason why you started grinding a line at the first place? And yes, that is really the case with every line in World of Tanks except the AMX 30B line because the 30 prototype, the tier 9, is just way and way better tier for tier than the tier 10, the AMX 30B. So why would you spend 180k XP and 6.1 million credits for an overall worst tank tier for tier? And I hear people thinking, come on, it can't be that bad. Well, let me sum up the stats for you. So if you quotation marks upgrade to the 30B, you get 323 extra DPM, 0.29 better accuracy, 5mm extra side armor and 250 extra hit points. But you move up an entire tier, which means that you can't bully tier 7s anymore and that you are going to be fighting tier 10 tanks a lot more often. And with only that weak upgrades, I can very much imagine why people would much rather stick to the AMX 3D prototype at tier 9 and leave the AMX 30B at tier 10 for what it is. So how do you get people to play the 30B more often? Well, you could simply buff it or you could slightly nerf the 30 prototype, which I personally think is the best option. Since if you compare the AMX 3D prototype to its closest counterpart, the Leopard PTA, you can see that the AMX 3D prototype clearly is the better tank. So if I were wargaming, I would tune down the AMX 30 prototype a little bit so it becomes on par with the Leopard PTA, which means nerfing its DPM and its turret armor just a little bit. That way you would make the Leopard PTA more worth it to play again and you would make the step up to the AMX 30B feel much more like a real tier 10 upgrade. But we'll have to see what Wargaming thinks about it if they even consider touching the AMX 30 line again. But for now, the AMX 30B remains a very unpopular tier 10 medium and a true number 5 spot on this list. So then, moving on to the number 4 position on this list where we have the IS-7 and the IS-4. Wait, what? Two tanks sharing the same spot? Well, this spot is not the only thing that they share on this list, since I had to put them both at the same spot because they both face the same problem. And that is power creep. And what do I mean with power creep? Well, power creep essentially means that an old tank completely becomes irrelevant because of the release of newer tanks with the same playstyle that perform pretty much better in every aspect than the old one. 
So the IS-7 has this problem with the Object 277 and the IS-4 has this problem with the Object 705A. Since the Object 277 and the 705A are pretty much way better in what they are designed for than the IS-7 and the IS-4. Since the Object 277 is meant just like the IS-7 for fast paced aggressive gameplay. But the Object 277 is simply more mobile and has a better gun and has better hull armor. Which means that the 277 is the overall better fast paced aggressor. Same story with the IS-4 and the Object 705A, since both of these vehicles are meant for a defensive based armor relying side scraping playstyle. And the Object 705A has way better turret armor and has a much heavier hitting gun and a rear mounted turret, which just makes side scraping a lot easier. So I think you guys are quite getting the problem with these vehicles already. So now let's actually discuss how to fix this. Well, in this case, I think the best solution is to give all four of these vehicles something they excel at. For example, make the IS-4 the more mobile side scraping defensive heavy with the more accurate gun and make the Object 705A the more slower heavy hitting side scraping defensive heavy by nerfing its top speed, traverse and accuracy. And for the IS-7, you could make it the more heavily armored slower fast paced brawler by nerfing its top speed and make the Object 277 the more lightly armored fast paced brawler by nerfing its after damage to 440 and nerfing its whole armor. That way it would also be a much more logical follow up from the T10 since the T10's armor also isn't that great for heavy standard. But anyways the power creep problem Wolf of Tanks has also occurs in other tech tree branches such as the STB1 and the MX30B, the T62A and the Object 140 or the 1-1 and the Object 430U. But I just found this one to be the most noticeable one. So therefore the IS-7 and the IS-4 claim rightfully the number 4 spot on this list. So then moving on to the number 3 position on this list where we have the Tiger 2. So I'm pretty sure that almost every Wolf of Tanks player knows about the Tiger and the Tiger 2. Since both tanks are pretty much the icon of World War 2. And I think that a lot of you also started playing Wolf of Tanks solely because you wanted to see how a Tiger would actually play in a game like World of Tanks. And back in the days, if you did, you definitely would not be disappointed. But nowadays, the Tiger 2 has suffered greatly. Mostly because of the release of tanks like the Defender and the Patriot who simply laugh at Tiger 2s when they encounter it in a tier 8 battle. When they simply shoot straight through the front of a Tiger 2's turret and while the Tiger 2 can't even pan the lower plate of a Defender. But this is not only the case with premiums. No, the Tiger 2 is currently also one of the worst standard tier 8 heavy tanks out there. And it even struggles sometimes when fighting for example a T29 which is one tier lower. So overall, I think the Tiger 2 is way too underpowered for the fearsome impact it originally had in World War II. So what I would do is simply buff up the penetration and accuracy a little bit and make it a better sniping heavy tank like the lower, for example. And I guess a little turret armor buff also wouldn't do any harm. That way you would restore the Tiger 2's might that it originally had in World War II without making it game breaking overpowered. But up until Wargaming gives the Tiger 2 some well deserved love, it still is one of the worst tier 8 heavy tanks and a respectable number 3 position on this list. So now let's quickly move on to the number 2 spot on this list where we have my all time favorite tank in the game, of course it can be no other than the Leopard 1. So to be fair, this position actually has to be dedicated to all tier 10s in the German tech tree. But since the Leopard is the worst out of them all, I just happen to pick it as the leading tank on this spot. So for the ones of you who regularly watch my live streams and ask what my favorite tank in the game is, I always said and I will still always say the Leopard 1, which actually confuses most of you. But then I always say afterwards that it's definitely not because of the Leopard being a good tank, but it's more because I think it's just the coolest looking tank ever and because it's actually the first tank that I've seen in real life. So it will still always have a special place in my heart. But when I say it's not a good tank, I actually mean it's pretty much the worst tier 10 medium tank in the game. Since the only thing the Leopard 1 has still left going for is a slightly better accuracy than the rest of the tier 10 mediums. But for the further rest, it's absolutely trash if you were to compare it for example to an Object 140. Because take a look at the 140, it has good armor, high DPM, good penetration, good accuracy on the move. And what does the Leopard 1 have? Um better gun dispersion 
Haha, <laughs> take that, you Russian bitch. But no, for real, guys, I think this is not only the case with the Leopard 1, but with almost every tier 10 tank in the German tech tree. And I'm not going to cover all of them because otherwise this video would be 30 minutes long. But I think most of you guys already get my point. I really think that the tier 10 German tanks and especially the Leopard 1 really need a slight buff so they can be more competitive again against other nations. But in their current states, they still remain quite a bit below average and that's why the Leopard 1, together with its other German tier 10 buddies, rightfully claims the number 2 spot on this list. So now, the moment you probably all have been waiting for, the number one spot and the tanks that deserve to be buffed the most are tier 10 light tanks. And yes, I had to dedicate the number one spot to five tanks at the same time, because they all suffer from the exact same problem. Because do you guys remember the hype when Wargaming first announced that we would get tier 10 light tanks? And when the update finally came, we were left with nothing but disappointment. Because instead of Wargaming giving us the ultimate light tanks we were all so hyped about, they just gave us sloppy half downgraded mediums. So now guys, let me just ask you one question. If I say the word scout, what is the first stat that comes up into your head? That's right, I guess most of you thought about view range. Light tanks are made to scout, to fulfill the most important role in the battle, to provide vision for your team and to excel in that by sacrificing other stats like survivability and firepower. So tell me Wargaming, what is the point of having tier 10 light tanks in the game while tier 10 mediums literally have the same view range without sacrificing their survivability and firepower? I don't know about you, but to me this absolutely doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No wonder you rarely see tier 10 light tanks on the battlefield, because why would you want to put yourself at a disadvantage, if you can literally do the same thing in a medium tank, but 10 times more effective. And that's why I think out of all of the tanks in the game, the tier 10 light tanks deserve a buff the most. But how can you fix this problem? Well, simply focus light tanks purely around scouting, so give them more view range and a better camo value than mediums, while downgrading their guns by reducing their accuracy, penetration and massively decreasing their camo value while firing in order to discourage tier 10 light tank players from using their very good camo to snipe at a distance and at the same time tune down the view range of all the tier 10s in the game to make light tank view range even more special and mandatory to have on the tier 10 battlefield. That way you would make tier 10 lights a lot more interesting to play since you're turning them from shitty downgraded mediums into a true vital part of a tier 10 world of tanks battle which makes the game in my opinion overall a lot more fun strategic and exciting and just because of that i think that the tier 10 light tanks are the tanks that mostly deserve a buff making them a true number one spot on this list So guys, that was all for today's top 5 videos. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please consider dropping a like. That would be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new to the channel and you like my videos, make sure to smash that subscribe button so you will stay up to date with all my future content. And also, what do you think of this list? Did you agree? Did you miss some tanks? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm very curious on your opinions as well. But for now, all that's left for me to say is have an awesome day and I'll catch you guys later. Jack it up. Oh, 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 oh,